Hi there, my name's Kevin Barlow and I'm a solutions architect with Databricks. And today I'll be talking through a potential use case with Databricks and some of the publicly available COVID-19 data on some contact surveillance and how you could do a solution similar to this with our platform. So the objective of this particular demo is to take data from the openly available COVID data sets. In this case, we'll be using the Johns Hopkins data sets, which has information on COVID cases, deaths, and um, different kinds of infection rates, as well as the IHME models, which are an epidemiological model that predicts the, um, the deaths of, due to COVID over the next few months. And we'll be going into that in a little bit more detail. And with this demo, we're processing, cleaning, combining all that data. And what it allows us to do is we can analyze this pandemic that is so problematic in so many different ways. And it lets us get down to a county level, which is really impactful on making decisions and driving some viable insights. And then we can then visualize and then act on those results. So why is this kind of solution important? Well, as everyone I'm sure knows, the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting everybody in every level in many different ways. And as a government organization or really any organization, the goal is to do make important decisions and prevent further spread of the virus, protect your constituents, protect your employees, and really be able to have a data-driven approach to uh, making any kind of impact. So this demo is aimed more at a government organization and we'll be looking at what's called an adaptive response. And the figure at the bottom shows what an adaptive response is. But basically what it is, is as cases ebb and flow over time with the pandemic, government agencies can then make their decisions based on that ebb and flow. So in this case, we're talking about shelter in place policies where you can then tighten or loosen those restrictions based on where the pandemic is at this point in time. And being able to do this in a data-driven manner is difficult because data is in so many different formats and it's in all over the place. So with this notebook goes to show how we can combine those and um, do some really large scale analyses rather quickly. So before we go into this demo, I just kind of want to level set on what the, what the data pipeline might look for this. So on the left, it's the data that we've already talked about. You have data on patient cases, you have epidemiological models, maybe you have some regional healthcare data or social determinants of health data, really any kind of data. All of it can come through Databricks and into a openly available centralized location in a data lake. And then using the power of Delta, we can refine that data to a point where we can actually do analysis on it. And while that might seem simple in a diagram, it's actually rather complex and using Databricks and Delta makes it really, it simplifies it a lot and it's a really powerful solution. And then on the right, we have a litany of potential use cases for this data. We could do um, some hotspot analysis, which we'll be showing in this particular notebook. You could model the disease if you have epidemiologists on staff. You could do some BI reporting and then drive things like an adaptive response solution. And all of that is using Databricks as a platform and MLflow to do your machine learning lifecycle management. And this is just one potential use case for the COVID-19 data. As we talked about, we're doing hotspot analysis and you could do epidemiological modeling, but really the possibilities are endless. You could do financial impact modeling. Maybe you want to combine data from the, the pandemic cases and how your company's doing. Maybe certain businesses are being hit harder than others. You could analyze the actual people, whether they're your constituents or employees, everyone's being affected by the pandemic and the data that's out there can be used to give you a more broad picture of what is happening. And the use cases could go on and on. So with that, let's uh, jump into the demo. So we're going to begin by analyzing and understanding the IHME models that are out there. So IHME is a research group out of the University of Washington that pretty early on in the pandemic, their goal was to predict where this pandemic is going to go. And as you can see here in this screenshot from this 538 article, which I definitely encourage everyone to go read, 
it gives a really good picture of what these models are trying to do. We are using historical data on the COVID-19 cases and deaths, and they're just trying to predict where they think the death rate is going to be going. Now, there's a number of groups that are performing these forecasts and all have their different approaches and different pros and cons, but the IHME group really has become the forefront of that effort. So it's um, part of the COVID-19 hub that Databricks has, and it's the models that we'll be looking at here. So first and foremost, we need to load in the data. So we'll be loading in the Johns Hopkins data sets that are out there, the IHME models, as well as some population estimates for the different counties so we can do some rate analysis. Running this data engineering notebook, we gather all of that data together from the end of January all the way until last week in July. So that's several months of data about the pandemic, which really gives you a broad analysis and a broad um, line of sight into what's been happening. So you can do some pretty powerful data-driven techniques here. And as you can see, once we've loaded that data, we have information at the county level, how many confirmed cases there have been, how many deaths there have been due to COVID, and how many active cases there may be. So let's start off by just reviewing these cases at the state level. So even though this is a Python notebook, we're doing most of this analysis right here in SQL. So that's pretty powerful in terms of collaborative aspect of Databricks. So you might have a data analyst or you might have someone on the, um, the business side that wants to be able to review this kind of information. So by doing a couple SQL queries, we can compare the, the case ratio changes in five of the Western states. And this is really cool because typically you would have to do these queries independently due to the size of the data, and we can have it all in one chart that's within the Databricks notebook. And as you can see, California here in the yellow is kind of in the middle. Arizona and California have been hit pretty hard here on the West. So those would be two states that we might want to look at a little bit deeper. So as we get down to a county level analysis, it's important that we talk about the adaptive response technique in general. So this diagram is coming from um, several different organizations. The CDC talks about adaptive response quite frequently, but the idea is that as the number of COVID-19 cases increases or decreases, governments should be able to adapt their shelter in place policies or Maybe it's opening and closing different kinds of businesses or opening up travel or tightening up travel. All of those policies are impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So being able to predict where this pandemic is going and which areas are safer to tighten or loosen is very important. So using Databricks as your central platform, you can do this in a more data-driven manner. So doing a similar analysis to what we did earlier, we're able to look at the changes in COVID-19 cases over time at the county level. Looking at some of the high profile counties, it's no surprise that LA and San Francisco are pretty high, but actually some of the Northern California counties are being impacted pretty heavily. And you could do this for every county in California or any state for that matter. So we would then combine this Johns Hopkins data with some of our IHME models. So the purpose of this section is to further review the accuracy and the potential impact of these models. So we'll be looking at three models that they've created over time. First, we have the model that they pretty much started out with at the end of April. And what this is showing is the upper and lower bounds of where they predicted COVID-19 deaths would be their actual predicted value and where the recorded value was. So as we can see early on, the model wasn't that great. They did their best with what limited information they had, but it's definitely not something that you would feel confident building upon any kind of solution that you might wanna use within your organization. But as time moved forward, they've improved a lot. This is a model they created just a week later in the beginning of May, as we had more information. And as you can already see, the error bounds are closer together and the predicted value is much closer to the actual value that was recorded. And moving forward, another model they created at the beginning of June is much more accurate. The error bounds are much closer together and the predicted value 
actually for the most part is higher than the recorded number. So what that means is you can very confidently say that the models that are being put out by the IHME group and that are being uh, coalesced in the Databricks environment can be used to feed some kind of model or some kind of decision that your organization is going to be making. And what does this mean for health organizations? Well, you can then use this information at, for your particular region, for your particular company, and you can look at what's around you and use data that you didn't really have at your disposal before to then make a business or organizational decision, which we'll talk about in the next section. So now that we've looked at the IHME models, we're going to be using those in conjunction with some of the Johns Hopkins data sets and really dig in deep at the county level. So what we'll be doing here is what's known as a hotspot analysis. Effectively, that is taking the data that we have temporally and putting it into a spatial analysis or a geospatial analysis. So we'll take the data we had before at the county level and we'll be calculating several different metrics. We'll be calculating the changes in deaths over the last three days, which we can then plot here at the county level, seeing that Los Angeles has the biggest changes in deaths over the last three day period, which isn't really a surprise because Southern California has been hit very hard. And of course, Los Angeles is a very highly populated county. So it's no surprise that their number is high. But more importantly, we'll look at the attack rate. So attack rate is essentially a metric on how fatal the pandemic is. It's really just a ratio of the number of deaths due to COVID-19 over the total number of cases. So this number is really important because as more people have been tested and as we know more about the pandemic, the fatality and the mortality of this disease and of this infection is very important because some areas like Los Angeles actually have a pretty good healthcare system and they have a lot of access to their constituents. But counties like Mendocino and San Bernardino or Shasta seem to be getting hard, hit harder than some of the more populated areas. And this factors into what's known as social determinants of health. And there's a lot of factors that go into this, but it's really important that we measure and analyze this, um, this effect. So using some open source libraries, we can very easily do a geospatial analysis within the Databricks environment. So we'll be loading in, in this case, GeoPandas and Folio, which are pretty common geospatial libraries in Python, and then using some publicly available shapefiles from the, what's known as the Tiger project. We can then plot these numbers on a map and do a really quick ad hoc geospatial visualization. So we can see at the county level, COVID-19 cases to date, the deaths to date, the three-day change in COVID cases, which as you can see is kind of more focused in the Northern California area, and similarly the three-day change in attack rate. So as, as an organization, I would recommend focusing on the attack rate because that's that has the most impact on constituents or employees. So we'll, we'll look into that in a little bit more detail. So in this case, we'll be looking at a couple data sets that are on the CHHS, the California Health and Human Ser Services Organization, open data portal. So, so these data sets have information on what are known as skilled nursing facilities. What these are, think of as assisted living homes or elderly care facilities. These facilities have typically the highest concentration of the at-risk community, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. And quite interestingly, most of these facilities have shared ownership. Typically, one group might own any number of these facilities. And many of these facilities have workers that work at many different facilities. And what that means is there's a higher risk for spreading the disease and for um, oh, passing the pandemic between people, especially at the at-risk community. So it's really important to identify which of these facilities we need to keep an eye on and which we may need to close down or have further testing and restrictions upon them. So using this data, we have the name of the facilities and ultimately we have a location for the facilities over here, which we can then plot on that exact same map. And based on the highest proportion of attack rate change, 
we can identify some facilities that we might need to um, have some kind of intervention in. And this is a very quick ad hoc analysis. This kind of analysis could be done in a much more programmatic way with some more advanced machine learning techniques, or this data could then feed a, some kind of a dashboard that is shared with stakeholders or, or with the public. And there's, the options are endless with this kind of analysis. And we could take it a step further and put in some contact tracing data. So the idea behind contact tracing is that for every person who is confirmed to have tested positive for COVID-19, or maybe someone who had recently died from COVID-19, we want to know where have they been so that we can kind of map out where potential hotspots of either passing the disease or catching the disease might be. And this is done with a variety of different techniques and technologies. We won't go into the pros and cons of each of those approaches here, but the idea is that you can bring in this data in a streaming format and have a really real time solution that shows where in the state you might need to focus some kind of intervention. Or maybe you need to map out specific facilities that might have the highest infection rate. And all of this can be done within the Databricks platform and could be then transferred into any BI tool if you're choosing, or maybe a geovisualization tool like ArcGIS. Um, and this data can then be used for any of the use cases that we had talked about at the presentation at the beginning of this. So thanks everyone for listening through this demo. I hope there's a lot of really good ideas um, and how this could have helped your organization. So in terms of next steps, if you want to hear more about how we have helped, have helped other organizations or agencies stand this particular solution up or other solutions, or if you have any ideas on what you might be able to do with Databricks, we have an entire team that's dedicated to organizations like yourself. It, we call ourselves the SLED team. That's the state and local government and higher education team. And please feel free to reach out to us directly and we would be more than happy to direct you to a person that would be able to um, help you along and during this hard and trying time. So with that, thank you for your time.